the oxygen keeping you alive right now, the very air you are breathing, is sparking fires inside your body, causing cellular damage and chronic disease. Another week, another discovery. Let's dive on in. This week, we are going to talk about free radicals. This is something that I've been seeing as I've been diving into plants and chronic disease, and I wanted to learn a little bit more. And this week, I'm going to share what I learned with you. Free radicals are unstable molecules in your body. These are molecules that are missing an electron. They steal electrons from your healthy cells, which can cause a chain reaction of damage throughout your body and your cells, which can lead to bad things happening in your body. There is a source of solution for this, and we'll talk about it near the end, but let's talk in a little bit about free radicals, what they are, and how they impact you. It starts small, but leads to stress, damage, and disease in your body. Where do free radicals come from? Well, free radicals actually come from oxygen, primarily. Breathing causes free radicals, but there's also immune response and intense exercise can cause free radical bursts, especially if you are not in shape. Um, but there's also a lot of external sources for extra free radical exposure. Smoking, fried food, UV exposure, air pollution. Free radicals are always around us. You can avoid them, but you can manage them. Another, ultimately, habits are what build our lives. You can either have good habits or you can have bad habits. We're going to talk a little bit about the habits that will increase free radicals in your body causing damage. The food and drink is the number one thing to consider. Burnt, charred food, think barbecue food. It's full of toxic compounds, unfortunately. That can lead to free radicals. Reuse fryer oil. You go and you have fried, deep fried food at fast food. Free radicals. Now, I love fried food as much as the next person, so I had to do a check to see, well, what happens if I fry food at home? Is it this as bad? Well, the answer is no, but it's still bad. Um, if you're going to fry food at home, you want to uh, make sure that you use an oil with a high smoke point and you don't overheat it. You use the oil only once and then you toss it. Reusing oil or going extra hot is what creates the worst scenarios for free radicals, which is Obviously, if you get fried food at a fast food place, they are reusing that oil over and over again. That is the worst scenario. It ultimately isn't good, but once again, we're looking for a balance here. It's not, you can't have any free radicals. Um, so if you're going to do it, do it at home and just do a little bit. Sugary drinks. This can boost your sugar and create oxidative stress, which is ultimately what free radicals do. Processed strat snacks, low nutrition, Causes high inflammation, which leads to free radicals. Um, alcohol, you know, if you enjoy a good time, there is a cost. Environment also leads to it. Cigarette smoke, sunburn, tanning, pollution, radiation, CT scans, x-rays. This one's a bit concerning for me because I am doing regular scans. Um, it's worth the risk in my scenario, but it does lead to... Oxidative stress, which has its own set of risks. Lifestyle stressors, uh, intense exercises, or you know, kind of really going off the rail with a, an intense workout in a, when your body's not ready for it. That can create oxygen spikes, create oxidative stress, which is what produces free radicals. Chronic stress, poor sleep. This is putting your body in just overall stress mode, which leads to free radicals being created. Crash dieting. Losing weight quickly actually releases free radicals into your body. Yo-yo dieting up and down is really bad for you outside of the fact you don't even want to do it anyway. Um, not dieting and being overweight and having a lot of visceral fat gives you a constant stream of free radicals into your body. 
chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, lead, mercury, certain medications even can metabolize and cause free radicals. What out of this list surprised you and what daily habits are you doing to encourage free radical growth that maybe you could tampen down or, or just not do at all? All right, let's give a little bit of a history lesson. We'll go quick. Free radicals were first discovered in 1900. Before this, we didn't even know what they were. In 1969, they found the body's defense for free radicals. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then a little bit more recently, science has realized that free radicals aren't all bad. They are useful to trigger certain things in your body and in small amounts. This knowledge is ultimately changing how we think about disease and aging overall. So why does all this matter, right? We talked about it a little bit, but who cares if an electron leaves another cell? Well, the reason this matters is when an electron leaves a cell, it creates shifts in your cells which can break DNA damage as well as damage other things along the way. It's moving. It's leaving where it should be and going somewhere else. And when your DNA is damaged, it can mutate, leading to cancer cells. In addition, you can have protein damage, lipid damage, and ultimately, oxidative stress has been linked to cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and ultimately just aging and dying. It, creating imbalance in your body damages the internal structures, can lead to mutations, and just ultimately not a well-oiled machine, which will cause you to die, <laughs> unfortunately. We, now, we are all going to die. That's going to happen. But we can decide how, well, we can try to decide how and how fast. Now, we mentioned not all free radicals are bad. There is some benefits to free radicals. Your body actually needs them. We can't live without breath. It helps your blood flow and brain function. Your immune system actually can use free radicals to create a burst of free radicals to kill bad bacteria. Your body does need balance. You just you need to control it by not having too much free radical activity. And the flip side, if you overly suppress the free radicals, there's actually some issues there. This is much harder to do. It's much easier to get a ton of free radicals than it is to suppress them too hard. But you can have too much of a good thing. So in for the solution. Antioxidants. We've heard about antioxidants. You see it on marketing. But do you really know what antioxidants are or what they do? Well, the truth is antioxidants neutralize that free radicals electron. What antioxidants actually are are molecules that are floating around in your body that have extra electrons that they can give away without uh, turning into free radicals themselves. These are your body's natural fire, fire extinguishers to put out these fires that are being created by the free radicals. Where do we get antioxidants, you ask? Well, you see my marketing labels all over the place. But the best places are whole foods. Berries, leafy greens, nuts, like almonds, herbs, spices, and seeds. Should you get them from a supplement? There's a bit of mixed reviews here. Um, in some studies, they found that they're not actually that effective. And then in other times, you get more than you need, which can actually create a pro-oxidant, which is, can be a bad thing. The reality is the best solution is fruits and vegetables. That, they're full of antioxidants, and it's basically impossible to overdose on them if you're eating them in their whole form. All right. Well, the best shields to do, to, the, best way, the best defense against this is eat the rainbow, eat a diverse food, uh, a diverse food group full of antioxidant uh, foods, Listen to my channel and learn more about some of the best ones. Um, avoid extremes. Move constantly. 10,000 steps a day is a great starting point. Or if you can't do 10, maybe 8, maybe 7. But move more. But don't move in extremes. Sleep. De-stress. Give your body a moment to repair 
and uh, and balance out these uh, imbalances, really, and uh, avoid the radical overload, right? You can decide what you eat. What you eat is one of the major driving factors of radical exposure. Pick better, make better choices, build better habits. Free radicals are unavoidable, but they are manageable. And it is worth the effort because you will feel better and you'll live longer. Next week, we're going to dive into almonds, another superfood. We'll check out its antioxidant activity. Give it a superfood score. You don't want to miss it. Um, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know what habit you're going to use to fight free radicals in your body in the coming weeks. God bless. Thank you for watching.